Hello everybody, this is Stott Antinatalist, and this is Camp Hill Cemetery in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And, um, <laughs> it's really eerie looking here. It's really, really creepy. And, um, it's beautiful though. It's green, um, extremely green. Let me go and show you this, um, <laughs> tree over here. Look, this is one of the prettiest cemeteries I've ever been in. And it's pretty cool here. It's, you know, it's not even 70 degrees um, in Halifax. But no matter where you go in life, you see the same thing. No matter what country you're in, no matter what economic group the country is in, um, no matter what color the people are, you see the same things. You see aging, decay, and you see death. That's what you see. <laughs> right? But look at this beautiful look at the entry to the cemetery. I think I'm going to title this video, Death in Nova Scotia. <laughs> There's plenty of death everywhere. In the 1850s, you can barely read. This is Beloved Wife, Mary Martha. And these stones are so old, you can't even tell who was buried here. <laughs> Broken stones. I've done so many cemetery um, videos. I, I'm tapped out of ideas, but um, in essence, no matter where you go, you just see the same thing. You see, you see babies being born, <clears throat> toddlers crying. Um, middle-aged people struggling to get around and old people sitting on park benches with their canes or their crutches. You see decay everywhere. <clears throat> Adam de Deshaies, de Deshaies, Chez Chez who departed this life the 8th of July, 1847, aged 75 years. I think lambs uh, are resembling the deaths of children. And somebody told me that once. <laughs> oh, look at these little tombstones. You can't even tell who's buried there. This is truly beautiful. And I'm sure it looks beautiful on my screen, even more so in person because it's so green and it's uh, spring on the east coast of Canada. Do you have anything to add to this video about the decay of humanity and everywhere you go, you... Yeah, it's just another reminder that uh, in life there's always decay, there's always death, and there's no escape from this. And even, even on these gravestones you see um, a common message is he survived by his sons or his daughters, but those sons and daughters are going to meet the same fate as well. So that's just the, um, the reality of life. And people don't visit cemeteries enough. They're not reminded enough. Of, of <laughs> Some people are creeped out by it. Oh, you know, the other day, this person, um, this person made a comment about uh, giving somebody uh, some time off for his dead relative. And, um, and I, I told him, I said, you know, uh, he, this particular person that you're allowing to take time off from work, had children of his own and he is going to uh, eventually be mourned by his children so why are you um glamorizing or um validating being a father because being a father or a mother just means that you're going to have somebody um one of your dependents or one of your adult ex-dependents 
they're going to grieve and mourn over your death. So. And I just want to add, in a way, cemeteries also glamorize things a little too much. In the sense of, like, when you look at all these gravestones, you only see good things about a person's life. You only see that they were successful. Nobody's going to write on a cemetery stone that this person was unsuccessful, unhappy, um, struggled with this or that. So it kind of gives this false glimpse that this person was just so satisfied with their life and it came to a peaceful closure. When in reality, the closure may not have been peaceful at all. They might have struggled brutally, hated their last years, uh, and had just a lot of torture. But you never see that on the gravestones. Yeah. Yeah, it's always, you know, dying a peaceful death. Or... Being loved by everybody. Being, oh, yes. Being Be successful and happy. And beloved wife, mother, daughter, beloved, you know? And of course, everybody thinks that uh, these people are awaiting the Lord and awaiting <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that is just such a silly fantasy to me. <laughs> You're just going to have moss growing on your tombstone. But it's truly beautiful here, isn't it? It's, it's probably the greenest cemetery I've ever been in. Yeah, there's some extremely old stones here that are from like the 1800s, um, over like 200 years ago. So it's a cool, uh, cool historic site as well. Yeah, I think if you're a parent, uh, you don't you don't have much right to to, gr to even grieve um, like your own children's I like death. This one, George Mitchell <laughs> fell asleep in the oh my <laughs> <laughs> fell asleep in the fifty ninth year of of his age. My goodness, I've never I haven't seen that one. <laughs> but um. You know, parents that bring children into the world, they just don't have a right to grieve. I mean, if their children dies of drowning or, you know, suffocates in a plastic bag, what right do they have to grieve? Because they initiated that death by birth. People that die so young, I mean, there's a four-year-old, a uh, four-day-old, actually, right over here, aged four days. <laughs> yeah, four days. And this one is one years old. One year old. Hey, that's that's the time to die, isn't it? Four days, um, nine years. I mean, come on. Yeah, those are the ones that are spared all the all the and griefs. <laughs> they were the lucky ones. Oh, there's pretty ferns growing here. There's just death everywhere. And there's always going to be death everywhere as long as people keep breeding. And you know, it said no dogs at the entry. Wouldn't this have made a great dog park? Like if people weren't buried here, this land is like permanently um, taken and um, reserved for the dead. Nobody knows these people anymore. Nobody comes to visit these people. And dogs cause far less damage. You can see uh, in some parts of the cemetery, there's, there's beer bottles, there's- There's uh, wrappers. Yeah, all sorts of things. So humans leave behind a lot more trash. And yeah, and there's dogs. plastic bag, plastic bags here. Look at this beautiful um, flower. But um, animals typically do not litter. I don't think any animal is really considered to be a litterer. Oh, it's kind of chilly out here. 
It's very windy. Anyway, do you have any any final thoughts for this video? I don't know, I think you it's just really, really beautiful here. Well, the, the most colorful cemetery I've ever seen was outside of Guadalajara, Mexico, and it was in a cemetery um, in a city called Ajijic. And I want to go back there so bad. Guadalajara was one of my favorite vacations. Oh, look at this McDonald's wrapper. Or some wrapper. A dog certainly did not leave that. It'd be cool to have that cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's also interesting too how um, just like in life, there's a lot of injustice and unfairness. And similarly in these cemeteries, you see certain stones that are very small, beat up, um, washed up. And then there's really expensive, nice looking stones. So it's just another reminder that um, anything that involves humanity and the way humans do things, there's always going to be a huge sense of injustice. And some people are gonna get a lot better draw, whereas other people are gonna get a much worse draw. Yeah, and look, like the barons here, they look pretty privileged. Both him and his wife died at 40, 74 years of age. Oh, they died. A, is that 95? Is that a 95 or 96? No, is that a 95 or 96? 95. Okay, they died one year apart. <laughs> So green. Mm. Like Spanish moss. I didn't know they had Spanish moss this far up north. Have you seen this one erected? What is erected? Erected means they put up the monument. That's what I thought, but why would you? Oh, back, the... back then it wasn't really like a vulgar <laughs> word. You wouldn't really use it today. No, but erected, you mean that's when the tombstone yeah, was put there? Yeah. <laughs> this is huge too, isn't it? I mean, this could even, you know, house people. Could you imagine some, like, little small houses? Mm -hmm. Little houses put here and, and a big dog park in the middle with maybe a coffee shop or maybe, like, a vegan donut shop and a, a vegan Mediterranean place right all here instead of a cemetery mm -hmm. to, make, to make use of it. Yeah, cemeteries are largely a waste of space. Save, shows how inefficient the people do what is this? Save the child's life and lost my own. Wow. wow. What, like, what I can't really read the it, what, it, injury. Um, injury received. Wait a minute. It's easier to read on the phone. Died, caused, major injury received while saving a child yeah. before at... Bagby, Bagby's something. Maybe it was a drowning. Very interesting. So he saved the child's life, but he actually um, mm -hmm. created the child's torment. And the child now is definitely dead because this was in the 1800s. So people act like when you save a life, you save it permanently, but you don't because death is going to catch up sooner or later. So. There's only prolonging. Grandma Staler.
this pretty flower just came from nowhere. One of these trees. I love a Spanish moss, but I don't see it in a tree. And there's a public garden uh, just across the way with a small beach, they say. So we're gonna head out there. And it's actually kind of cold. I did not bring any coats. So I just brought a sweater, but uh, you really need a sweater here. Deaths in Halifax.